Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. In this video, we will explain bilateral sagittal slit osteotomy as described by Abvijizer and Delpont. The Abvijizer Delpont osteotomy is a bilateral sagittal split osteotomy of the mandible, ramus, and angle, which can be extended into the posterior body. It divides the mandible into two smaller condyle bearing segments and a large uh, segment consisting of the mandibular body including the teeth and chin. This procedure is a modification of the classic abvijizer osteotomy but is intended to create larger contact areas between the segments. However, it may be associated with a higher risk for heterogenic nerve damage through the splitting procedure. This is a universal procedure that can be employed for all mandibular movements. To illustrate the procedure, we will here show the correction of mandibular retronethism. The obvious problem for uh, this procedure is the close uh, proximity of the osteotomy lines and the neurovascular canal. Care should be taken not to damage the inferior alveolar nerve during this procedure. Do a proper planning for this orthognathic surgical procedure. For this procedure, the transoral approach to the mandibular angle and the transoral approach to the lateral mandibular body is used. Here is the marking of the incision. The procedure starts with three corticotomies. The first cut is made through the lingual cortex a few millimeter above the mandibular foramen uh, parallel to the occlusion. The corticotomy uh, is extended from the interior to the posterior border of the ramus. The second cut is made through the buccal cortex in a vertical direction at the level of the first or second molar. The third corticotomy connects the first two lines uh, along the interior border of the ascending ramus. So this is the third corticotomy or third cut that is along the interior border of the ascending ramus that is connecting the first two lines. This is the marking of the first line. This is the second one. So this third one connects the first two. The final split is completed uh, with a thin osteotome, splitting the entire ascending ramus from interior to the posterior border of the ramus. A special bone spreader can be used to mobilize the segments. After the bilateral split is completed, the large tooth bearing segment can be moved three dimensionally. MMF is performed to position the large tooth bearing segment to the desired relationship with the maxilla. A prefabricated surgical splint or wafer may be used to facilitate this. Care must be uh, taken to maintain normal fossa condyle relation and to avoid condyle displacement. Usually, this is achieved by manual positioning of the condyle bearing segment superiorly into the denied fossa. An alternate method of positioning the condyle bearing segment is to use a condyle positioning device. After outlining the osteotomy lines, the patient is placed into MMF using a centric relation bite wafer. Plates are adapted 
to Spain between the ascending uh, ramus and maxilla of the zygomatic bone bilaterally, taking care to avoid the plain osteotomy sites. Positioning plates and MMF are then removed. Here you can see the MMF has been removed and the positioning device that was the mini plates that has been removed. And the bilateral sagittal split osteotomy is performed. After placing the uh, patient into the desired final occlusion, the positioning plates are reattached to position the condyles into their respective position within the glenoid fossa. An alternative to this is intraoperative position control with navigation. Finally, osteosynthesis is performed. The plates are placed here, as we will discuss in the next slides. And the condyle positioning device removed. The some movements will require additional osteotomies or removal of bone to allow for a good alignment of the respective segments. If a significant male relationship of the proximal and distal segments occurs, a secondary osteotomy and additional osteotomy in the posterior aspect of the tooth bearing segment may be necessary. Care must be taken not to injure the inferior alveolar nerve. This will allow for a better alignment of the proximal and distal segments and facilitate paseo osteosynthesis. Internal fixation is usually performed with positioning screws, plates, or combinations. Screw placement is usually performed with either transbuccal instrumentation or angulated drills and screw drivers. A minimum of two and preferably three bicortical position screws are placed between the buccal and lingual cortices. Care should be taken to avoid damaging the inferior alveolar nerve. Two possible uh, patterns of screws placement are demonstrated here. A plate can be applied across the segments on lateral aspect of the mandible using monocortical screws. A minimum of two screws on each side of osteotomy is necessary. Avoid placing the plate and screws in close proximity to the alveolar canal in order to avoid damage to the inferior alveolar nerve. For additional stability, a second mini plate can be added close to the inferior border of the mandible using bicortical screws. Combination of a single plate and a positioning screw, that is anti-rotation screw, are also possible. This improves stability against rotational forces. After completion of osteosynthesis on both sides, the MMF is released and the resulting occlusion is checked against the P-plane position. The splint may be fixed to the maxillary teeth with a, a few thin wires and left in place during the healing phase to allow for neuromuscular adaption and position control. Thank you. Wish you best of luck.